Hey folks, welcome back. Took a break. I decided to let them have their last Christmas without spoiling it too much. Same with my friends, by the way. My own personal life. And I'm really angry at the PR firms now. I realize how much uh, murdering they're committing. They're murderers. Just in order to take that job, you have to have the, the IQ of a fly or you're a murderer, one or the other. And a lot of people think because someone's got a degree that they got merit, but you, you have to earn merit. And PR firms don't earn merit. Uh, they earn their money by manipulating and deceiving and obfuscating the facts. Uh, in this case, it's a deadly job. They're murdering people by doing that. And so we really got to go after them. You know, because th their comments never go away. Unless you put them on my site, then they disappear. But that's because I know you're a murderer, and I don't want you to murder the people that are coming to my videos trying to figure out the truth that you're deceiving and denying them of. And when, you know, like I made that video yesterday about how radiation, does radiation delude? And I know it's an obscene title, but, you know, you had to put it out there that way just to make sure everybody has a fair shot at understanding it. And uh, this is outra outrageous murder they're committing. Pure and simple, where they come in and they say that the background radiation is like a banana. I mean, even the, even the, the pundits and the, and the TV hosts will do that too. But the ones that are in the comment section, I mean, uh, to to uh, TEPCO paid over $12 million dollars uh, to an internet firm or monitoring firm, a PR firm, just to monitor Twitter and Facebook. And that was just for a short period. So you can imagine how much money they're dumping into that, just loading and going with the money to deceive people, to murder people on purpose, to keep the law alive as long as he can. And then what's the plan? He got nowhere to run to. He destroyed the planet at this stage already. And we know uh, this is rather amazing that the, the Americans, and I guess the Canadians too, decided not to tell the population they were breathing in 10 hot particles a day uh, because of national security. That's why they done it. That's why no one got told. And so that took all the responsibility away from the local, uh, state, and federal uh, departments that are supposed to be monitoring this and informing the population, they were taken out of the know because it was all declared a classified, classified secret. So some of our, our bureaucrats have decided that it was too important. Our very own government, 100%, has decided that it was too important. It was a state secret. The terrorists would figure it out and take advantage of it, I guess. Um, and that's not that I'm not going to say that has to change I'm going to say that that ends that truly ends because that's going to come out like it is here now uh, that our government made it a state secret not to tell the population and I'll be fucked if they're getting away with that excuse me you don't get to hide behind the word state secret about the genocide you committed with the signature on a piece of paper. That's a psychopath. I'd rather have the, I'd rather have the serial killer with the knife in his hand than the psychopath like that who destroys millions with the stroke of a pen. I desperately want to know who done that, who made that decision, and we're going to find out. They're not getting away with that. I'm not digressing away from the fact that uh, we've got to have war crimes, a war against humanity, Crimes against humanity for the PR firms for out there lying. It's unbelievable they're allowed to operate. It's unbelievable that people like that actually exist on Earth. It's it really truly, un to me, it's inconceivable. But it's conceivable, obviously. But it's it's inconceivable that people grew up in a neighborhood like me, and, you know, like here in Canada, and went and got a job for a PR firm. This is what they do all day. And they go home and tell their friends 
how big their paychecks are and they drive around in their cars and they have their big screen TVs and everything else because they're out there murdering people. I mean, my goodness. What kind of society, what kind of people could do that job? What kind of psychopathic, you'd be surprised. And they justify it because someone paid them to do it. They think it's okay to be out there murdering people in the comments section and that video will be out there for years and people will read those comments many times and they're murdering people every single time by trying that and doing that and succeeding in getting away with that. And then they lied so much about the fact that, you know, they keep equating background radiation of potatoes or bananas or rocks or walking when that has been here long before the human experience started. And it has nothing to do with the radiation that will kill you, the buckyballs. You know, the hot particle, just one of them will do you in. And you can't get rid of it. It sequesters in your lungs and in your organs. Um, and to me, you know, every single day, this gets even worse, gets even more scarier. But, and, but today, in particular, I'm focused on, again, the PR firms that are murdering people. They're, they're murderers. That's what they're doing out here. It's unbelievable. I don't imagine they showed up here tonight. The last time they showed up, I think there was 500 comments stomping their heads into the ground. You guys are unbelievable. So they come here to attack me, and then everybody slams the shit out of them, and they can't even operate anymore. They start attacking the people that are commenting instead of uh, attacking me. But it's quite obvious what they're up to. They're making stuff up out of the handbook of lies to sell it for a paycheck. It's the lowest form of life. But that's the good thing in the sense is that we got that IP address. Because uh, when they leave a comment, they're leaving their IP address behind. And so we can definitely get all of these. I mean, these people are not the players that we're really want, but that's the trace back to the corporations and the companies. And then the people that are funding them, uh, they should be into uh, war crimes. And they will be. I mean, that's what we want. That's what we need just to start the process. And I know some people are out there, the experts are saying that we can hire the same old companies to go into here and clean it up. It's not like that. That's the good old boys' school routine. We got to get thousands and thousands of institutions around this planet working around the clock, producing academic peer review studies on how to deal with this. And you remember the picture on this video, it's 45 gallon drums that are rusted. And see, when they said they were going to start up all this nuclear business, they said they were going to put the waste in sarcophagus. A 45 gallon drum is not a sarcophagus. It never was. And uh, then they dump it into the ocean. And so we retroactively got to clean up everything that's been spilled in the next, uh, if we got the time, if the, the storms with the Philippines don't come in and wipe us all out, like it happened to the Philippines, as the ocean gets more intense and they're tired about 4% of what, coming to our coastline, 4%! As if uh, April and May of 2011, everybody walking to school every day or walking on the streets or getting out of their cars and breathing air, everybody ingested at least 10 a day, if not four or 500 a day or four or 5,000. It's inconceivable. And these are the buckyballs, like dust, where they just float around. You know how dust floats around um, when the sun shines through your house? You know your house is spotless. There's no dust anywhere. You can still see the dust. Well, these micro particles, they're one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And so they're a lot smaller than your DNA. Um, and that's what we talk about when we talk about buckyballs. And there's a link below to that stuff to a peer review study again about it. But there's headlines going all the way back in 2011 about this uh, phenomenon of when they sprayed salt water and um, the numbers they use, hang on, because I got two folders here. Uh, that's not the one, <laughs> this one here. 925 quadrillion, that's what an R, that's a thousand million million. 
backwards. That's per second, every second. Now, till the end of time. 900, just this one release. Just hang on. Because I know this is, to me, so important. 925 quadrillion backwards of contaminated water and TEFCO has, this was uh, November 23rd, 2013, and TEFCO has no idea where the fuel is. Now this came out in the first few months after 311. This is what they sprayed, the salt water they sprayed up on a 925, and it washed out the estimated 925 quadrillion. That got a little bit loud. I'm not sure what that was all about. I'm not going to worry about it. 925 quadrillion, thousand million million, Beckwells, uh of that alone, every second, each second, in the ocean. This is energy. Uh, and you think about energy when it comes to nuclear, but how fast is the molecules moving? How much energy is there is, is a better way to think about it? Because it's not like heat, but the, you know, the gammas and the betas are moving at 270,000 kilometers uh, hour. That's energy. <laughs> Right? Like a gun might be 900 feet a second. We're talking 270,000 kilometers an hour is um, or a second is unbelievable speeds that that's ejected out. That's like you know the stuff shooting off the sun in one sense. And so that's energy. That's different than heat. That's much, 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 much different than heat. Inconceivably different than heat. And it does this nonstop, uh, just not nonstop till the end of time popping out this energy, which is different than heat. And that's what made the typhoon so powerful in the Philippines. They converged, remember, uh, Francisca and the other one converged on Tokyo and Japan, rather. And then they came together and they picked up all that isotope and all the radiated water uh, that was in front of them and brought it and went down and slammed into the Philippines. And like I've done that other video to really put that one to rest, because that's going to come everywhere else on top of that. And these people are just going to be victims till the end of time. They can't continue to live there. The next one that comes there, there's no shelter for them to hide behind this time. You know, getting hit with 200 miles an hour winds for four hours. And an F4 tornado up to that point would only last at best six minutes and maybe be a quarter mile wide. It lasted four hours and was over 100 miles wide and took out 44 provinces. It's unbelievable that that happened on this planet. That shouldn't exist on this planet, certainly not at that scale, except for in a little uh, short-run hurricane. Uh, the Fukushima ocean plume hit Canada six months ago, and the PR firms are saying that it's okay, go back to sleep, it's just like the background radiation of a banana. Yeah, people, you know, this is admitted back in May uh, that there was t people were ingesting 10 particles, hot particles, the buckyballs, a day every day. And yet the PR firms are here right now saying this is not true and making up stuff because they think everybody's stupid and ignorant. Um, and that's murder. That's 100% murder is what they're doing to us because we already got the information has been released that this has taken place, that there is truly three melted reactors, and that Chernobyl was only one-third the size of the reactors at Fukushima. And so, you know, without anything else, you had nine times worse than the Fukushima release. And there was a million people mobilized to go to work on Chernobyl, where people weren't allowed to work 15 or 20 seconds, and they went home. But in Fukushima, the monsters are taking the homeless and the disabled and the mentally impaired and putting them in there and keeping them there for months when they should only be there for 15 or 20 seconds, like Chernobyl. And then they, they don't even give them a full check. They kick them loose and they got no medical or no health, no moral support. They're not going to get no medals like they did at Chernobyl. Not that that matters, but a recon it's recognition that they're sick and they're, and they're infirmed because they gave it their all. But these people didn't even know. And the PR firms are out there destroying them at the same time, murdering them, making sure they die a horrible death at the same time 
by keeping this law, trying to keep the law, they're trying to keep the law alive, even though the information now is staggering, it's unimaginable, thousands and thousands of headlines over the last three years, and buries them under heads, but they're still at it every day, all day, every day, relentlessly, trying to keep the, the law alive, and that's murder, and I'm sick of it. I'm really sick of it now. Every time I see their comments and their lies about bananas and candles in the ocean, they're, they're really scared that we work that out, that the radiation makes the storm stronger, because the radiation is much different than a warmer ocean, even though the ocean is getting warmer because of all that radiation. Don't get me wrong, that's true. But the radiation is pure energy. It's so pure. It never stops. It's like a battery that is always at full charge. It's unbelievable. But except it gets more charged, it gets more enhanced every day because there's so much going into the ocean every day. And with all these murder and PR firms out there lying, how can we ever get started? You know, this is a meteorite that's coming at us and it's going to you know, take out a large portion of the planet in a bad way, in a real bad way. Unless we do something, we organize and we learn to accept it as it is and then try to deal with it. Because if you've got a meteorite coming with us and everybody's like, ah, it's not going to hit us. Ah, don't worry about it, it's not going to hit you. Imagine if that goes on every day, all day, and you look in there and you say, but the, 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 the meteorite is coming at us. And they're like, ah, don't worry about it, it's not going to hit us, it's going to go right on past us. TV told us. Uh, but they know that it's going to hit us, but because TV told them, you know, it's like a banana, don't worry, it's, it'll, you know, that fills up the whole sky, but it's going to bust up and it'll be just a little light show in the sky, not going to hurt you. Meanwhile, they're all going on vacation, they get in their bunkers, and they say, well, we're, you know, we're going to start uh, rock watching, or whatever you want to call it. It's outright murder that this is happening to us at a rate that is happening to us, and I wouldn't even have to exist if PR firms weren't out there lying. The lobbyists, you know, are paying the PR firms, the nuclear lobbyists. These people shouldn't exist. They're supposed to have charters, not human rights. And that's why the lobbyists exist. A lobbyist under a charter is illegal. They should be in jail, every one of them. They will be. They're, they're not allowed to operate. At some point, this, the lid is going to come off of this. And it's not going to be that long before the lid comes off of this, I can assure you. Because you're going to wake up this entire planet in a bad way. And so people are going to be looking for revenge in a bad way. If you wake it up in a good way, you can blame it on Al-Qaeda, you know, or whatever. The ghost and the machine. But at least get started to work on this. That can never happen as long as we got the PR firms out there supplying the pundits, supplying the media, supplying the colleges and the universities with fundings. These are the creatures from hell, the PR firms, the nuclear lobbyists are one and the same, and they shouldn't exist. It's illegal to be a lobbyist under the bills, under the, the constitutions, under the Magna Carters. The only reason we have lobbyists only re is because corporations illegally have human rights. And so it's either a riot in the streets or you get rid of the human rights of the corporations immediately, and that can be done because it's an illegal amendment. It's an illegal amendment to the slavery law, which was meant to free the op uh, slaves from an oppressive government and is being used by corporations to oppress a sovereign people. And these corporations are supposed to be under a charter, and under a charter, when they're doing stuff like this, you can cannibalize the company and use it to pay restoration, fix the damages, and you can incarcerate these people. And, uh, you know, there is some senators out there trying to take away the human rights of corporations, but because they got human rights, they can put their money in offshore accounts and buy lobbyists because they're not paying taxes in your state or your communities. But these big corporations, uh, you know, they put all the all the little shops in your communities except for some of the hanger honors at a business in a hurry and then all the money is by plastic and it's all shipped out of your community immediately and there's no money floating around in your community they don't pay taxes because they have human rights and they put their money in offshore accounts so the system you know is cannibalizing you and you can change all of this in a short way because 
the, the amendment to give corporations human rights is illegal. It's illegal. And if one single person out there had a lot of money, he can go get a lawyer tomorrow, and they can actually challenge that, file it in court and challenge it right away. And you could actually knock their feet out underneath them because what they got is an illegal amendment to the Constitution. And the point is that it, it's either got to go that way or it's going to be a fight in the streets. It's going to be panic around the planet. And you can understand that, what they got done to us and the corners they're pushing us into because the PR firms, the monsters, the murderers, the mass murderers, the hideous, endless murderers, these creatures, these are monsters, true monsters living among us, living in our communities. Can you imagine having a PR representative for the nuclear industry living next door to you or on your street? That's scary stuff, okay? I'd rather have Ted Bundy on my street any day than a nuclear lobbyist or PR firms. These are the monsters of society, and they're hiding. They look like me and they look like you, but these are actually monsters. These are they're murdering people all day. Did I say that enough times? Did I shit on their heads enough times? I like to string a rope around their neck and throw it over a pole and feel them. Legally, of course. Feel them, the life just kicking out of them. And so the judge said, Danny, would you want to hang out on that rope? And I said, yes, your honor. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. May I have another? <laughs> they, they, they deserve it. They're murderers. And Japan has enacted a state secret law to stop us from uh, having these war crimes. That's not going to help them, okay? They're a de democratic democracy. And so, I'm not joking when I say this stuff. This is not a joke, by the way. That we got to prosecute these people immediately. I'm sick of uh, playing the games anymore. I'm sick of the murdering that I see every day in the comment sections and all the blogs out there. All the media, all the pundits that are lying and, and equating the background radiation from uranium-234 and uranium-235 with a banana or equating the background radiation of strontium-90 with the background radiation of a potato or equating the radiation from plutonium-239 and uh, 238 with the background radiation of the rocks. And the zeons, and it's, you know, with background radiation of um, just sitting in your house or eating your food, because that's generic. That can't hurt you. You can sit in your house all day. It's not going to give you cancer, depending on what you got in your house, of course, but the radiation is not going to give you cancer. But if you get one isotope of that stuff, it's going to give you cancer. And a real bad cancer, too, because this is a high, a hot particle. This is a high production particle. If it's got a uranium in the core, it's going to last 4.5 billion years. And they cremate you, they liberate the isotope. You can't shut it off. It's so deadly. And then when you had all of these particles that got blasted all over the site from the pools, there are x-rays and neutrons, there are splitting atoms, they're throwing out the isotopes at a phenomenal rates, at phenomenal rates, till the end of time. We're talking about MOX fuel that's uh, two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So it's like having two million reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean. That's why we've seen the storm in the Philippines. Because when you talk about the numbers, that's why I've done that video about the numbers. And let me bring that up. Nowhere to run hot radioactive particles in Seattle. 50% of the level seen in Tokyo that latches onto the lung tissue. That's those buckyballs. You're breathing in. Just one of those is going to give you cancer. What's 10 a day going to do to you? Huh? You know, like what is 10 a day going to do to you if one is going to give you cancer? And once it's into you, you got a hell of a time dealing with it. you got to get all the nutrition in your body that you can possibly ever get in your body. That's why I always tell you about the dandelion, how it got every nutrition and every mineral in the body. That's why I tell you about the DCA, and that's why I always have that link below, because I know for sure, I've been following it for years, that that reduces all tumors by 70%. That's survival. You might not get rid of those tumors. But if you can reduce them down to nothing... 
then that's manageable. You can live a normal life without misery and agony and having to liquidate all your assets. So I have to do the things I do every day and shoot these as many times as I can and put them out there. And like that video I done yesterday is only three and a half minutes long, but it's around eight hours to do 115 pictures and to blend them together, do the audio and write everything down. And so this only takes me an hour. I sit here, I click the button, then I click the button at the end of an hour and it's all finished. And I don't got to do nothing for you know, seven hours just listening to lectures. But I have to make the other videos sometimes too. And that that's an enormous amount of energy to to get that idea. Because uh, you can imagine you got to hunt down all of these pictures. <laughs> you got to make it interesting. You got to make it lucid. Try to anyway. And you got to get your, you know, all I'm trying to do is put out what I see as a travesty where the PR firms are equating, uh, deluding that the ocean deludes it. All the ocean does is spread it out, makes it even more worse, more encompassing, till it ultimately fills up the ocean. There's no oxygen left behind. There's no oxygen left behind. This stuff leaves no oxygen behind. And it takes a few years maybe for it to work its magic, its hellish magic. But um, if you took one of those isotopes, the ocean is full of, and you put it in a beaker of ocean water that normally would have trillions of little animals into it, then that isotope will cook all of those things. It'll cook them. The water's not going to boil, but there's at 270,000 kilometers an hour energy that is constantly flying out of this. 270 miles an hour, your eyes would leave the back of your head. Uh, and these isotopes will put that energy out for billions of years. And so it will kill everything. That single isotope will kill everything in that beaker in no time at all. You can put that isotope in a five-gallon bucket. It'll kill everything in that bucket in no time at all. You can put it in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and it'll kill all. If it was full of marine life, the, the microscopic marine life, that is the very foundation of the ocean, the environment can't survive it. Look, my buddy here, his partner, uh, is a marine biologist for 25 years. And so he had done a thesis on the habitats. And the most important part about the habitat was the microorganisms, right? So the whole habitat had to be perforated with the, you know, the smallest possible types of holes, also with all the other sizes for animals living. But the animals couldn't uh, habitually stay there unless there was a microorganism living there too. Uh, they just can't exist without the other one. And so that's the very foundation of the ocean, is what I've seen uh, commercial diving for 14 years. It was you could pick up a rock, and there was creatures all around that rock. And that rock had thousands of years of genetic selection, superior genetic selection. And these were, you know, a lot of these creatures never had a six-month lifespan, but they would live in that rock, and that rock was its own little world. And it's a fascinating thing. And you'll see all kinds of creatures all over that rock. Uh, and we used to do that all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. So nowhere to run. Hot radioactive particles in Seattle at 50% of the level seen in Tokyo. Published on June 8, 2011. Hot radioactive particles in Seattle. And the PR firms are saying, oh, it's just like the background radiation of a banana. That's murder. That's outright outrageous murder. Why would they say stuff like that? Why would they say, ah, it's like that? Why should they care what you're saying? Unless they're trying to marginalize what you're saying. And they've been attacking me constantly about the Philippines. And I understood what that was going to happen. Because as I thought that out, I realized, holy, that's, uh, the Philippines got wrecked because of the radiation in that ocean. That ocean is pure energy. It's like a battery. You know, if that ocean was boiling from just heat, it still wouldn't create these uh, types of storms that are 100 miles wide. It done that because it picked up all the moisture in these typhoons. They're full of moisture. And if you look up the global warming... Uh, movies uh, since to late late 2011 you'll see all the postulations of superstorms there's probably eight or nine and they're all based up on that same principle so they were indoctrinating people in a hurry with really shitty movies with really 
terrible graphics uh, in order to get them acclimated as quick as they can to these events that would happen. And so that's why if you go to Wikipedia right now, you'll see the Philippines says, oh, the top speed was 155 miles an hour. Outrageous lie, see? They're in on Wikipedia manipulating it. And there's another peer review study coming out in September 20, uh, 21st. Observations of follow from Fukushima reactor accident, San Francisco Bay area rainwater. And that was September they had found those isotopes, but uh, Professor Fukushima's uh, horrifying radiation will be entered in the Pacific for decades and there's no end in sight. And so all that energy going out into the Pacific Ocean every day, uh, the demitted 400 tons, but they're not talking about the aquifers underneath it. They're not talking about all the, you know, they're talking about the water they spray on it. They're not talking about all the rain. They're not talking about all the snow that are liberating all those isotopes all over that country and moving that all over the country and also it gets picked up in the weather it gets picked up through evaporation anyway and then, but it also gets washed through the storm drains and into the water aquifers of that country and so that whole country is is actually under a siege from its government right now not only a state secret law they closed down the internet on october 25th right 2013 and that was after a 7.5 earthquake, and no one's ever got a picture of what happened at Japan. Um, but you got to realize all that rain and all that snow and all those typhoons, and they have a lot of typhoons, uh, which city is going to be next to get wiped out, now, or country is going to be next to get wiped out after the Philippines? When we know that typhoon went right on down to Vietnam, done some serious damage, as if they haven't suffered enough already from nine years of uh, chemtrailing their skies with Agent Orange, with toxins, with a dioxin that's banned all over this planet right now. And some serious hellish uh, things going on. And the PR firms are saying uh, and lying and manipulating Wikipedia and everything else to hide this stuff. These are the monsters of our society. Like I say, you would never want one of these people living next door to you. Uh, you would never leave a child alone with a PR firm employee. That's child abuse if you would do something like that. And I'm going to come over to the comment section because I just rattled on for who knows how long. Oh, 32 minutes? I could have went for another 5 minutes. And a typhoon spreads Fukushima fallout study. A study. Typhoons spread, and that was uh, November 28, 2013. November 28, 2013, last month, yeah, say a month, just about a month ago now, four weeks ago, a peer-reviewed academic study came out that showed typhoons were spreading the Fukushima fallout. So just to back up what I'm telling you all along anyway, that was a study that I keep forgetting to mention to you folks, but a, a, a study warns that the typhoon is picking up all the radiation. No shit, Batman. And once again, before I come over to the comment section, unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water in Fukushima reactor, spraying the salt water in the reactors, forming new uranium compounds. Notice how they say that, uranium compounds. That means you've got a 4.5 billion half-life, and then that dissolves to 234, is it? From 235. And then that's got a half-life of 2.25 billion uh, what's left over, and then the news uh, got a uh, half-life of 4.5 billion because you changed it into the other radioactive isotope. So it's not really 4.5 billion years. Not that that matters. Not that we're going to be around here to find out if they're right or wrong. It's just that when you do the math, it's like 80 billion years down the road before it stops becoming radioactive and just becomes rayon or something. Right? So the law is even the iodine-131. Um breaks down eight days later to iodine-132. And 132 is absorbed into your thyroid and radiates your thyroid nine times more effectively than the 131. <laughs> so it's just, it's sickening. And then that breaks down. Uh, so that's got like a 40-day lifespan, even though they always tell you it's got an eight-day lifespan. But because one breaks into another one, and another one breaks into another one, but the other one stays half, the other one stays there, even though... The other half is, is, they call it disintegrations, but it's actually turned into another radioisotope. So the lie is seriously 
vicious and violent and meant to trick you by always saying the same thing, almost like a banana. Well, a banana doesn't have a half-life of radiation, see? An isotope, like uranium-238, which is what's left over, the yellow cake, and there's a billion tons of that on the planet, that uh, stuff is different again, because once you weaponize the isotope, once you weaponize the uranium, or the plutonium, or the strontium, or the cesium, once you... Um, once you weaponize that and went through the process, and so you ended up with the 238 was what's left over. That's what they're putting in the bullets. They're flying, uh, shooting all over the country. Like the A-10 Warthog fires out around 71 Nagasaki bombs, a ton and a half of depleted uranium rounds, right? 30 millimeters, and then the bigger guns. It's just depleted uranium. That's all of the fires. They're not tipped. They're not coated. They're solid 238, uranium 238. Uh, so it's a ton and a half a minute. That's the equivalent of a 71 Nagasaki bombs. The animosity equivalent of 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation. Uh, dirty bombs. D dirty bombs. That's what they are. And, you know, that's what the A-10 Warthog, that's all it does as far as dirty bombs. I know it's the gallows laugh, but every time they shoot, uh, you know, most of the soldiers, half of their bullets, even the ones that are, are walking, Half of their bullets came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in Oklahoma, McAllister, Oklahoma. That's all they make is depleted uranium rounds. Uh, 20 train car loads a day are coming out of the DRC, coming out of there, and on the slow boat to uh, four continents where they don't have much nuclear power, so they went in and sprayed it all with uranium. And they were firing 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq to get the 11,000 Taliban. 11, uh, 5.5 million rounds a month to get 11,000 Taliban. Every month, year after year, in Iraq, there's 5 million orphans in Afghanistan and a couple of million widows we know about. There's a couple of million missing in Iraq. There's uh, 4 million in refugee camps to get 11,000 Taliban. All that carnage was to get 11,000 Taliban that they still haven't got. I mean, they're like carbon buckyballs themselves, right? I come over to the comment section. And a very high concentration of hot particles in the Pacific Northwest during April and May. That included um, plutonium and amarinium. What extraordinary half lives. Uh, that was June the 29, 2011. That was an interview uh, with Caldecott and Gunderson. But yeah, it's that's quite the headline. Uh, you know, 4.7 quadrillion beckles, 7.76 trillion beckles, plutonium-239, 95% uh, of Fukushima's discharge transported, transported in the Pacific right to North America, 156 quadzillion beckles of cesium-137, 220 million beckles of cesium now in the spent fuel uh, pools, uh, one, two, and three. Serious damage there, 300,000 beckles per cubic meter of radioactive iodine deposited near Tokyo. So that means all the way to Tokyo and back. 400 kilometers away, 250 miles is 300,000 beckles per square meter. And a worker might get five beckles disintegrations a second. A beckle is disintegration a second. So each of these numbers, that'll go on every day till the end of time. So each headline is a new addition. But this is every day. This is the odd. This, this is... Every day, that doesn't stop. So you add it another trillions and quadrillions and quadzillions of becquerels each day. And uh, these hot particles can produce their own uh, isotopes on top of that. And so we're, we're, we're looking at a concoction that we have to deal with. We just can't hide away from that. The Neptunian-239, nobody talks about. Uh, the the 5,000 new plant workers, uh, you know, a million... Beckwells per kilogram of cesium and the mysterious black substances, 15 quadrillion Beckwells of radioactive substances suspected in the trenches at TEPCO, sort of rain rains down in those trenches and washes it. These numbers will drop you. You don't get to walk away. You don't get, that's how fast it can kill you. It's inconceivable that the PR firms were out there lying about all this when I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds you know, the, the radiation skyrockets 3,500 times 
when just the, what it was already was considered skyrocket, but then it skyrockets 3,500 times past that. The most fearsome thing on the planet is radiation, folks. And I keep saying I'm going to come over to the comment section. And what did I do? 40 minutes? Uh, hi, Rush Jensen. Comfort Climate. Hi. Hi, Green Road Project. Hey, folks. Hi, Kate. Y'all say. Hi, Tom. Make his look in. Oh, we got Miss Milky the Clown 1. I seen your video. You're worn out, I can tell. We, we, I think we all kind of guessed that in the last few weeks. You're, you've been at this a long time, right? So, yeah, we're trying to keep keep the spirit alive for you, but you can't stop. You won't stop. You know, you give it up. You ain't going nowhere. You'll be back in five days flat. And you said, mm -hmm, I can't get, I can't, mm -hmm. you gotta, you can't stop what you're doing. I know the difference. I know the difference. Besides the fact that you could stop if you wanted to, because you got so much on your site, and, and just go remix and start posting everything again, and start from scratch. Because uh, to go in and watch everything you got on your two sites, that's hard work. It's awesome, but just to make it is—I can't even imagine. It's just like so much time just to try to watch it. So how much time does it take to make it? Well, I know how much and how long. Hi, Elizabeth. How long it takes. Hi, Mickey. Mr. Mutt the Surf. I live in Rhode Island. What should you be doing? If you're under the jet stream, right, uh, then you're in the worst spot possible. If the jet stream comes right over your head, or you're on the edge of the thick jet stream, that's a bad spot. The stuff is landing on you. And you have to learn to accept um, the reality and move on. And at some point in the near future, your property is going to lose all its value anyway. As this goes out, people won't buy it. I guess some people will buy it, but you won't get the monies that you put into it. And so that's a bit of an ethical thing too. How can you sell your property knowing that the people that are going to live there, um, you know, could get radiated? That's because that's the reason you're leaving. So just you know, it raises. Uh, yeah, I know Miss Milky's not going anywhere. She will. Yeah, she will. I died late. And uh, if you live in like anywhere under the jet stream, you got to get out of the way. And if you're living on the Pacific coastline within 500 miles of that coastline, uh, my opinion is you got to get out of the way, period. Because, you know, forest fires will liberate all those isotopes. Uh, your ground is full of isotopes. Let's face it, this is what I do all day, every day. I I listen to lectures, I research, I read, I go back right to the dates, and I read the FOIAs, uh, there's links below to that, there's links below to all the pictures, I analyze them, I'm still not through them, and because I have to analyze every picture, I'm looking for tidbits, I'm trying to, you know, then I gotta look up information about that building, I gotta learn stuff about that, and, uh, and so much of it just expands your mind that you get, you know, you got to sit there and start typing so you don't forget what you're thinking. And uh, there you are, you're off. Uh, just to research little things can take so long, a couple of hours, just to find the actual, make sure it's actually true. Because you can't say it if it's not true. Right? You can't, uh, I can't do what I'm doing. I don't need to fabricate. I don't need to fabricate. Hi, Blasted Hippie. How's it going, bud? I don't need to fabricate anything is the problem. I wish I could. I wish, you know, it was that simple. But you heard the numbers. 5,000 nuclear plant workers. And let me bring up that picture, our screen capture. Uh, on May 22, 2011, there was 5,000 nuke plant workers suffering internal radiation exposure. Right? And the PR firms are to say nobody got hurt by this. But, I mean, there's the headline. Nuclear, nearly 5,000 nuke plant workers suffered internal radiation exposure after visiting, visiting Fukushima. That was May 22, 2011. 5,000 people were suffering from, you know, breathing that radiation. And you can't get it out of you. Well, you can get it out of you. Um, you can make your body stronger. 
so that it doesn't do you in. It doesn't build up these big, thick tumors. And that's why I got the DCA link below. That's why you always hear me talking about the dandelion to get you on that path, like um, turmeric had a 700 peer review academic studies. But there's so many other great, incredible stuff out there. But none of them are made by GMO. GMO has all the nutrients engineered out, and it doesn't allow you to uptake the nutrients, right? Uh, that's the problem with the GMO. And it's so hard to escape GMO when 85% of your store shelves and your corner shops are GMO. It's almost impossible to get away from it because it's using your deodorants. It's using your shampoos. It's using your clothing. And so your baby uh, food, your pet food, your, your diet supplements, uh, your pharmaceuticals are mostly all GMO. And uh, that doesn't allow you to uptake the nutrients or the minerals, right? Because of the formaldehydes and the glyphosates that are in it. And so what you got to do is you got to find a way around that. You really, truly got to change everything about your life. Uh, that's... You got to learn to go out and pick berries, even though they're probably radiated. At least they got the nutrients in it. You can't escape the radiation that's coming at us right now. You can't escape it because they never told you about it, never warned you about it, never informed you about it, and you don't have a lot of you don't have any idea of how actually truly uh, immersed in the radiation world you are, uh, because you can't see it and you can't smell it, you can't taste it. You can't, you know, hear it. You can't pick it up, and so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stand up to the normal, fright and flight response, you know, like you're in your house, you you sleep and you wake up and you smell smoke, and you can see fire. Well, you run, right? You might poke your head back in later to see what see what's burning in there, but your instant reflex is to get out of there. Uh, this one here, you have no concept. When your children were walking to school on May the 19th and May the 20th, there was a snowstorm of invisible radiation radiating the entire enormous he the northern hemisphere. And I got all the peer-reviewed academic studies on that now. And so does most people, I'm sure. But I got just so much of that now um, that even the Canadian government had done, went out there with the planes and flown along the coastline. We got those numbers. We got those charts. We got those graphs. And the PR firms are just saying, oh, it's all just like old background radiation of banana. But we got all the experts telling you there's at least 10 hot particles you ingested every day in North America in 2011 in May and April. Um, that's, you know, so if you got children, you can expect leukemias, serious cancers in the near future with that. And, and so we see that now. Um, but also you can expect the Philippines type storms showing up is my, because not much I can do about what happened in April and May of 2011. I can't change that. And I'm warning people, telling them how nutrition and DCA uh, can help them survive that. Uh, but what I've seen in the Philippines, that's tangible to me, see? That's very tangible to me. Um, and that's going to happen right around the Pacific coastline as this ocean fills up over the next year or two, it's going to be like, totally radiated. That's going to spill over into the other oceans. And so we need, as a collective, this planet to get busy. We, not only do we got to find a country to, to have these war crime trials in, so we can, whatever country we're going to have the war crime trials for the PR firms, we're going to make sure it's a country that where they let us hang people. Because I want to see these friggers kicking. I really do. If we were in Iraq, we can just hang them from a crane, uh, but we're not. And so maybe we should have the war crimes in Iraq so we can see them hanging from a crane. Think about how invigorating that could be. I'm not saying I don't like, I like violence. I'm just saying some people deserve to hang, and PR firms and the lobbyists, they deserve to hang every bloody one of them. They shouldn't be on this planet. And these are evil creatures. They know what they're doing. They know the money is good, obviously, but they also know what they're doing is evil, and they feel like they can get away with it. But what happens if one of those Philippine storms strikes Canada or strikes, uh, you know, California or something next, and you get all kinds of dead celebrities and politicians? 
How are you going to hide it then? Then there's going to be pandemonium chaos. If we come out and look at it and say there's a big UFO, <laughs> UFO, big meteorite coming at us, we wouldn't have the mass panic on the planet. Everybody would be too busy hoping that we can deal with it. And that's what we would be doing. We would, we would actually deal with it because they couldn't hide away from it, see? And they would want to be able to be in control of the rallying that goes in behind that. But that's the crisis that we we face, a much more scarier crisis than that. Because the, these typhoons that are turned into a tornado that are 100 miles an hour, 100 mile wide, uh, just at 200 miles an hour are ferocious. They're going to get much faster and much wider than that. There's no other outcome for this. That is the way that that's going to play out. And uh, the examples of it now are increased storms all over the world. Of Because uh, it's not just the radiation you put down there, but it's all that radiation that's coming out every day. That's the issue. That's the problem. Is there's so much going into the ocean every day. And then the typhoons, because the whole country is covered in radiation. And every time it rains and snows, and you got that evaporation, you're eliminating your... You're liberating that, uh, a lot of those isotopes. It doesn't mean that you took it all in there. It'll just create more isotopes on the ground there. Because it's just like a big machine. That's what the isotopes are like. They're like machines where they never stop. Um, and I come over and say hi to people. Because I think I just went... Obviously, uh, how long have I been going for? 50 minutes or something? Yeah, so I'll come over and wind down. And we'll say hi to everybody. Uh, we got three three DF, hung, drawn, and quarters. <laughs> Thanks, Daisy. Good stuff. Hi, Stormy Cloud. Mickey Smith. Russ. Philip. Lawson. Think we all need to eat mushrooms from Japan? Well, mushrooms is one of the first things radiation goes into. So you go ahead, but uh, don't recommend it. And see, Mickey got wild cards. Lucky bugger. That's pretty cool. Um, and you can grow a lot of stuff indoors. You can't get away from radiation. But you can make yourself healthy that you can deal with the cancer tumors themselves, right? And the DCA I got below reduces your tumors. And there's a lot of other things like turmeric. Um, once again, I still haven't finished that video. But you can look up my cancer videos on my site. Go and type in cancer. Look at the long ones. And you'll see the screen captures of the things that I'm recommending. Uh, like pineapple cores is about, you know, hundreds of times better for, than chemotherapy. And um, coconut oils. I can't even come up with them. I got a whole list of them there. I got them on my phone, actually. I got everything on my, believe it or not, on my phone. So when I'm sitting around with people, I can say it to them and read a bit. Hi, Sergeant York. Kurtz K. Okay. Yeah, you guys were crippled by you had a big ice storm in Canada. I've seen a lot of them growing up, lots and lots of that. I used to have to go out and get on the boat every morning at 3 o'clock and take the axe and smack away at the boat and knock that ice off the boat. And then we would steam out the harbor and you, every 20 minutes, go up on the bow and you take your axe handle and you hit the bow and the ice would fall off the boat and the bow would rise up in the air. And you wouldn't go out in stormy weather because of the spray, obviously, right? But you sometimes you get caught up in it and so you're going around the boat all day long smacking stay wires and smacking lines to break the ice off because top weight. And so I know where you're coming from. Hi, Junkyard Flyer. Yeah, that was a fun show tonight. Yeah, we need to hang PR firms just to make us all feel better. That would make us all feel better. I don't know about you. We may not be able to save the planet, but I sure as freak would feel a lot better if I seen a bunch of these uh, creatures hanging from, uh, legally, of course, from poles. Hi, Julie Wet. Work. We need fields of it like they used to be. Yeah, no kidding. Hi, Sylvia. And Kiri. Thank you. I'm winding down, folks. So another minute or two. I say hi to you. Uh, Green Road Project. And the truth. And the true believers have to take a bath in the spent fuel pools. <laughs> Here, I double, I double emotion. Hi, New York Clubmaster. Hi, Tom. Yeah, if you grow your own mushrooms inside, mushrooms are good, yeah. Mickey says he missed it. Yeah, no no worries. Hi, sweet Jane. Ice storm hit you hard. Yeah, a lot of trees down. I've seen the pictures, some fascinating pictures. You see the kids skating up the road. 
Anders skates. You catch those pictures yesterday? That was pretty crazy. Like three or four people skating. I've done that a uh, number of times. We used to skate across the harbor. It would freeze over. Um, Miss Milky the Clown has decided she's going to take a bit of a break. And we all know that's not possible. But we'll let her live that fantasy as long as she wants as she can. Like, I hope she can. Uh, Dana do they dope rope DARPA robots will serve them, feed them, kiss their fat asses. Yeah, DARPA. And Miss Milky missed the first 15 minutes. Yeah, you're welcome, Miss Milky. Um, yeah, 108 watching. Wow, I never checked. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a good, you know, Zoe snoring again in the background. That's, a, you know, that's something I laugh about all the time is no matter what video I got up here, Zoe's in the background snoring. <laughs> It'd be something weird to have a video without Zoe snoring there because I can hear her a lot better than you guys probably can. Thank you, Elizabeth, Kurt K, Tom, Mickey, Sweet Jane, Miss Milky again, of course, Philip Larson, <laughs> Phil, time of drinking. Elizabeth says he's a Newfoundlander, distinctly Canadian. Yep, I'm pure Canadian, folks. I truly am Canadian. I'm not a Newfoundlander. I'm not a British Columbian. I'm, a, I'm Canadian in that sense. But uh, I, I, my site had taught me um, something I already knew anyway, but it's reinforced for me that everybody had the same hopes and dreams for their loved ones and that we all aspire uh, to the simple things in lives. Uh, we're no different than anybody else on this planet, no matter what language or religion we really speak. We're not, we have the same kind of, uh, uh, we want chairs or we want a little table. We all want a couch and a stool to put our feet upon. We we all, none of us need more than two kettles, kettles, right? None of us needs two coffee makers. None of us needs two fridges, uh, conventionally anyway, you know, unless you're doing something particularly different in your life. None of us need uh, two brooms, you know. We're as a society on this planet. We all have, you know. We all think the same way. I really do believe that. I've seen it myself uh, from musicians all around the world, and so that that was. Uh, I always found that so interesting that uh, so many people would say uh, best wishes to you and your loved ones, from totally different spots on the planet. That. Um, most of these people are very impoverished, but they, 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 they talk the same way as... And so that, to me, you know, that really... I always think about that. I always remember that, right? Even though I might not agree with certain religions or I might not agree, agree with certain cultures, I realized that I just... I don't agree with certain little tiny fractions of that culture, but the rest of the culture I adore. I love uh, everything about them. And I realized they're no different than me, that I could live and coexist with them uh, any day of the week and would be happy to, because I get it, right? We're all the same. And so that's why we have to do this. We have to push this out there and to get the transparency necessary to come out and face it and deal with it and get all the academic journalists to produce uh, peer review studies to uh, try to solve most of the major issues and then innovation to deal with the rest of it. That's the future. Because if we don't do that, we don't have a future. Period. It's either we do that, or there is no future for humanity. We, we, we will cease to exist as we kill each ocean and the species and the human experience. Everything else falls apart. And that's not what's supposed to be happening with us. That's not the utopia that we were all hoping for and that a handful of people are denying us um, a better world by murdering us and the PR firms are enabling them to do that to us by uh, keeping this down all the time so we'll catch you folks tomorrow night Miss Milky we'll see you with your next video in a few days when you get I'm just making fun right now And then if you <laughs> we'll see you in a few days or tomorrow night folks back again right up until New Year's we'll take a day off and then we'll be back at it again so 